Hi, my name is Ron Gerham, and I'm taking off my mask now as we are adhering to uh, COVID safe practices. Uh, again, my name is Ron Gallon. I'm the plant systems operator at Fort Sumner Historic Site, Bosque Redondo Memorial. Today is our third installment of Recipes of Remembrance. We'll be discussing Atole. But first, let's learn a little of the site history. The mission of Fort Sumner Historic Site, Bosque Redondo Memorial, is to respectfully interpret the history of the Diné and Inde during the United States government's campaign of ethnic persecution in the 1860s. During this time, now referred to as the Fearing Time, or the Long Walk Period, both tribes were forced to march to the one million acre Bosque Redondo Indian Reservation. At the center of this reservation was Fort Sumner, also known as Huelde, or the Place of Suffering. This concentration camp was truly a place of suffering where the people struggled daily to survive due to mistreatment, starvation, disease, and exposure. At Fort Sumner, crops failed yearly, and as a result, the two tribes were dependent on rations distributed by the United States government. Ration quantities varied throughout the reservation's operation, but were typically eight ounces of meat, which were salted pork, beef, bacon, or mutton, whichever was available, and 12 ounces of cornmeal or white flour. Occasionally, some salt, sugar, or coffee beans were provided, depending on supply trains. Most tribal members did not know how to prepare these foods, but through intense cultural interactions with soldiers and Spanish settlers, the people found a way. Atole comes from the word atoli, from the Aztec. It predates back to pre-Columbus times in Mexico and South America. Now, atole is a porridge that many New Mexicans to this day still make. And although there are many variations of the recipe for atole, we will be discussing what the Native Americans, how they made atole in order to stay alive at Bosque Redondo. Now, there are a couple of letters that was written by General Carleton to Fort Sumner, specifically about Otole. And so we know for a fact that uh, Otole was made by the Native Americans in their encampment at Fort Sumner. Now, these two letters, I'm going to be reading a couple of quotes from them. In 1864, Carleton instructed General Crocker at Fort Sumner in a letter to ration the amount of food to the captive Indians and in that letter he instructed the general that the captives, quote, must make their food into a tole, by which it will go much farther, and to use pumpkins and melons, of which Mr. Labadi informs me that there are yet many, to help out their meals. The Indians must be made to understand that we are doing our best for them but cannot overcome impossibilities. Unless we tool the timely precaution, they must starve." Unquote. Now that's just the first part of one letter. Now the second letter was written uh, on March 9th of 1864. Carleton, again, asked of the commanding officer of Fort Sumner, quote, the animals of the Indians must be brought and consumed before you kill the head of work cattle. These you will need for plowing. Atole will go a great ways even without meat. The Indians must live on the smallest possible quantity of food. Let's move into my kitchen and show you the recipe and how to make atole. For this simple recipe on making a tole, what you will need is four cups of water, one half cup of blue corn meal, one half cup of raw cane sugar, but you may also substitute granulated sugar or brown sugar, one cup of milk, and you can salt it to taste. Optional ingredients, you can also use one teaspoon of cinnamon and a one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. 
We're bringing the water to a boil. We're going to add our blue corn flour. And let that boil until it thickens up. Similar to making oatmeal. Just keep stirring it until it starts thickening up. Once it starts to thicken up, you can add your sugar, which I'm using raw cane, but you can use granulated or uh, brown sugar. A cup of milk. dash of salt. Yeah, and that's it. You just keep stirring it up, let it thicken up some more. Now, thank you for watching this segment of Recipes of Remembrance.